Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending our webinar today. My name is Michael Mandarin. I've been a financial advisor since 2002. Uh, my firm is 123 Investing LLC. Uh, I am a 1996 graduate of the United States Military Academy, and I'm a registered representative with GA Repwin Company out of Castleberry, Florida. This next slide is our disclosure slide. Please take a moment, especially if you're watching this on a video replay. Uh, please note that this is not an offer to buy or sell a security that is made either through a prospectus or through a private placement memorandum. Uh, remember, past performance is not guaranteed of future results. And also, I do not uh, provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Uh, this is one of my favorite Bible verses about planning in general. It says, where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. And with that, I'd like to start us off in prayer. So, dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Uh, Lord, I ask you, though, to use me as a vessel, Lord, to be able to teach uh, these principles of tax savings. Uh, Father God, and I just pray for peace over everyone on this call. I pray peace over our land, uh, peace over the world, Father God. We pray that, Lord, you bring an end to the world uh, wars that are going on right now. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Uh, we're going to get started right off the bat uh, to honor everyone's time uh, and the opportunities we're going to be teaching about. These mostly are offered through our firm. Some we need, need to get lawyers involved with. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to get started on our first topic, which is infinite banking. This is uh, being your own banker. And what are the opportunities of being your own banker? So when it comes to being your own banker, we use look at cash value life insurance. Uh, and everyone knows that banks, you know, have the best buildings in every town, city, and in America. It's because they get rich off of our money. So one of the things we look at within the banking is we take control of your money. Uh, we take that away from the bank. Uh, we treat your money just like the bank does. We're able to take loans against your money. Uh, and it also provides tax deferred and tax free growth. You know, so one of the, uh, Traditional ways of saving money is when you when you spend, it's you're actually interrupting compounding uh, interest. So we're going to talk a lot, a little bit that on the next slide. Um, so either you lose interest or you pay interest for everything you buy, and that's what we call in the financial world the opportunity cost. So we believe your money has to reside somewhere. Uh, so one of the things with with being your own banker system it is does provide for safe uh, dividends. It's not designed to beat the stock market or even real estate. Um, and, and it does avoid, the good thing is, market volatility. So on this slide, you're going to see uh, uh, four different components. So I'm just going to look at here's the zero line, just to kind of give a start as a basis. Um, this is a person who has no financial resources. Uh, then we have the blue line here, which is a saver. So this is someone who saves their money over time, and then they're purchasing. So they drain the bucket. And again, you've seen that they're saving, draining it, saving it, and draining it. And then you have the red line, which is our someone who uh, uses leverage or goes into debt. So they go into debt for a purchase, and then they pay that back, and they're actually paying interest uh, to uh, the bank over time. The saver, of course, as they're saving, is they're earning interest as they're saving. Uh, but what we want to introduce with uh, infinite banking is it's this green line. It's where... Your money starts growing. However, you borrow from yourself. So you're leveraging your own money and you're paying yourself back and then the lending institution you're paying back. But the important part is here is every time you're borrowing, as you're paying your loan back, the good thing is that compounding interest never stops. So that's one of the key factors when it comes to uh, being your own banker and, and using this as, as an opportunity to be able to purchase things. Because everyone is buying and, and using the money to buy something. So again, on this, you have the saver who drains the bank. Uh, so the one thing that we're going to be teaching on with infinite banking is it's that opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost, of course, for the debtor is they go into debt and then they're paying interest to somebody else. But with here, with this green line, with the wealth creator, that is the person where the opportunity cost is we never avoid that long-term uh, the capital gains uh, and company interest that goes on. And this is kind of another true cost of, of uh, paying cash. So uh, there's a, uh, when it comes to purchasing, and this is an example of someone who is saving, saving, saving. For instance, if you're saving for uh, your children's college and then you're draining the bank and paying cash, 
uh, for your children's college. So understanding the true cost of your purchase can play a very important role in helping you be more efficient uh, when it comes to investing. So in this example, this is someone who's investing $5,000 a year at a rate of return of 5%, which the nice thing is with money markets, that's what you're able to get. And um, we're comparing this over a 36 year time period. However, we're draining the bank. So we're draining that bank at year, uh, right around year 18. Uh, and it takes us uh, 18 years to refill that bank. So in this case, by doing that, if you were to leave your money growing over time at that 5% growth rate, of course, this is where we're showing you that full, uh, the full opportunity is at $508,000 is what you potentially, again, hypothetically speaking, uh, that's not including taxes or, or what have you. Uh, however, the delayed part is we've invested that money over time. You can see here, we get up to right about 150,000. We drain the bank and now it takes time to rebuild. And that rebuilding thing, this green line here is that's your opportunity cost. So when we decide to make purchases, you also have to consider what is the opportunity cost. In this scenario here, if this was cash value insurance, you actually can use that policy to be able to uh, leverage from yourself. <clears throat> and also just for those that are on a call, just as a reminder, uh, there is a Q&A section uh, or in the chat function. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them at the end. So the next opportunity we're gonna teach about is uh, using oil or natural gas in limited partnerships. You know, the advantages of this is there's a very significant upfront tax deductions that potentially can help lower clients' uh, current income taxes. Uh, there's also a potential for non-correlated long-term tax advantages, uh, creating an income stream uh, through these types of partnerships. Now, to be upfront, most of these partnerships do require you to be an accredited investor. Uh, that's either $200,000 a year as a single taxpayer or $300,000 as a joint taxpayer for the last two years and including this year. Uh, that is one of the requirements. The other requirement is a uh, million dollars of assets to exclude your primary home. Uh, so look at the potential tax advantages here. So when it comes to oil or gas drilling, you know, the big thing that the IRS does allow for is the intangible drilling cost deduction. And depending on the partnership, that could be anywhere from a 50% to as high as a 75 or even an 85% tax deduction off of your investment. It also uh, has accelerated depreciation that's there. Uh, and of course, the depreciation, uh, depletion allowance that's also allowed as well. And I'll talk to that in further slides. And of course, we think the last advantage is the growth of those tax savings that you have if you reinvest the money that you are saving on your taxes. So the potential drilling costs, um, this is an upfront tax. Typically uh, on some of the opportunities we work with, this does come through a K-1 uh, that's distributed, but approximately 60 to 80% of the amount that you invest uh, on your current year could be used as an above, above the line tax deduction. Again, this could be offset your adjusted gross income. This could also be used to offset any capital gains from a sell of a business or highly appreciated stock as well. Second potential advantage is the accelerated depreciation that comes along with this. Um, so oil and gas limited partnerships, they can utilize and accelerate depreciation. So you can receive a potential another deduction uh, in the second year of up to 12%, between 10 and 12% of your investment on the following year. Um, and another neat thing about with this is that because it's part of the tax code, it does allow for a 15% of your distributions to be tax-free. So these investments, the return of capital, uh, it is actually taxed. It is 85% uh, of your income you're receiving from these types of investments uh, do come uh, um, with a, a, a tax opportunity. And then there is the 15% tax deduction that you get on these distributions. And last but not least, we do believe that there is, of course, if you take the money that's not sent to the IRS, and even if you put it in a bank account, money market account, you know, earning four or 5%, you know, that is your growth on your tax saving that you are able to be allowed. Now, the next section we're going to talk about is uh, business real estate planning. So we're looking at, you know, here a couple of different opportunities and these next slides will show, you know, many of the opportunities that we either offer at our firm or just allow you what you can do. So in this case, we're looking at someone who's selling their real estate outright. So in this case, the real estate's worth $2 million. They purchase it for $100,000. So right now there's zero cost basis. 
So when we go to sell it, if you're just selling it outright, there's a recapture of 25%. Uh, and there's also capital gains of 20%. So in this case, this is an estimate that of that $2 million sale, there's approximately $412,000 at estimated taxes. And again, that's going to change uh, based off of your state and, and, and other variables as well. Uh, so that's just, this is assets are included in the estate and there's, of course, they're not credited protector as well. And then the second way you can actually look at this is you can pay your taxes over time. So we have an installment sale. Again, same principle. Same amount of tax would be owed. However, the portion of the principal is uh, it's it's pay uh, you're getting paid over a a time period. So you're still paying those taxes over time. We're still not avoiding the taxes, and there's still the recapture of depreciation that's involved. Now, another opportunity I'm sure that some of the people involved have heard of a 1031 exchange. That's a like kind exchange based off the IRS code 1031 that you can take and defer your capital gains. And you can defer your cost basis as well. So as you're deferring this, uh, there's opportunities where you can, if you want to continue to be a landlord, you would just find a like kind property. And we'll explain this uh, in the next slides as far as the details of what goes on with a, a 1030 run exchange. There's no creditor protection. You're still a landlord. You still maintain the real estate. Um, we have not avoided the tax problem. We just deferred that. But again, you're deferring that. And, there, and then there's potentially more depreciation that's on the newer properties as well. Now, the... Last opportunity we're going to show is just a, it's through a tax exempt trust. So this is where we can completely avoid taxes altogether. So kind of the same basis, $2 million uh, cost basis is uh, down to zero. But when we sell this, we're able to avoid capital gains. And with this tax exempt trust, you're actually able to uh, receive a lifetime income stream that's based off of the entire amount of that sale. And there's also a way that you can leave a lasting legacy uh, to your family and even to uh, churches or charities of your choice. And that's something that, you know, love to have a discussion with you or for some CPAs on the, on the call as well uh, with your clients as well. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the Delaware Statutory Trust or the 1031 Exchange. And I'll leave this slide up uh, recently, but just, you know, some of the main reason is, is just to, you not want to pay those ta uh, the capital gains this year. And we're deferring those uh, taxes along the way, uh, potentially increase income potential. Um, you know, when we're looking at the 1031 exchange, things that we would say is this, when you partner with a firm like ourselves, we go out and search for the 1031 exchange opportunities that you're looking for. We, lick, uh, we have uh, various opportunities in various states. We have commercial, residential real estate. You know, these are all opportunities that, we look at and we, we're able to work with our clients. So again, love to have a conversation with you. But just for those that aren't fully aware of the timeline that comes with this is when we're looking at the 1031 exchange, there are some limitations, you know, as the investor. So the investor, for them to relinquish the property, they, they purchased of the relinquished property goes into cash. Um, that timeline is from day one be, and before the end of 45 days, you have to identify up to three properties, regardless of their value, um, not to exceed 200% of the value of the relinquished property. And what we always tell clients who are doing 1031s on their own, when you work with a financial company like myself and, and GA Repo and Company, we can go out and we can be your third option if you've already identified two properties. Because if you've ever bought real estate, the timelines just never add up. So for the true timeline of the 1031 exchange, you do have to have, uh, have this whole completed within 180 days where the investor uh, after that time period for you, to, for you to require that property. So for us, we look at it as why do a 1031 exchange with us is our individuals most importantly is they want to retire being the landlord. So we give them diversification in multiple opportunities. Uh, we do provide uh, various income streams from there, depending on what type of commercial property do we have. Um, we can reallocate your investment somewhere. So you don't have to put all your money in there, but the money you do put in a turn to work. 1031 exchange, you would be able to avoid uh, the capital gains. And that's going to be explained on uh, this next slide here. So again, the big thing, what we try to do is we save um, we save on that being that, that identifiable property. So we can be that uh, that third, second or third option for uh, the investors are on a call that are in real estate. Uh, most of these opportunities that we work with typically have $100,000. And again, we go out and search the marketplace. We do have 
uh, vendors that we work with on a regular basis. So we typically will just see what opportunities they have available and we'll reach out to those for their those are uh, in a property. So um, and just to, in the chat function, I'm gonna go ahead and put on uh, for those who are looking to uh, work with us in the future, I wanna give you our contact information here real briefly. So make sure if you do have any questions or if you do want to uh, reach out, there's a, a link you can click on our Calendly link as well. So I just thank you for that. I'll pause for a moment there. So when it comes to the 1031 exchange, this is actually the, the, the money that comes into it. So just to give an idea. So in this case, we're using a, uh, a million dollar net sale, original cost of property. So we've kind of, we've done some assumptions here that the adjusted cost basis is uh, $100,000. Total gain is $900,000. So again, here's some numbers here. This is depreciation recapture cap, uh, tax, capital gains tax. Um, these are the surplus taxes. Of course, these are not determined what those are. But in this case, we're looking at net proceeds. Approximately about $850,000 is what you'd be receiving from that million-dollar sale. The advantages of the 1031 exchange is the course same capital gains. However, we avoid the 25% uh, depreciation recapture tax. We avoid and defer the capital gains tax, the Medicare surplus tax, individual state tax, and the total liability tax. So we avoid all that and by, by putting that into a 1031 exchange. And our investors who like to do these, they just keep finding like kind of exchanges under the IRS code. Uh, again, section 1031. So those are opportunities that we we do offer. Uh, and of course, these are there's a lot of uh, disclosures involved with these types of properties because they, your money is typically illiquid uh, during this time period. So most of these uh, 1031 exchanges that we do work with are anywhere from a uh, you know five to even a seven or even eight or nine year hold. So we do let folks know that uh, this is going to be a long term hold. There's absolutely risk involved with that. When you do work with a company uh, and a financial advisor like myself, you know our firm does a due diligence. Typically, every offering that we do have also goes through a third party due diligence as well to make sure uh, all the financials are correct as far as us moving forward on these opportunities. So go ahead. That was just for illustration purposes. Uh, you know, sell real estate is going to look different for everybody. Uh, Next opportunity is we're going to talk about is a qualified opportunity zone investing. So this is based off the 2017 tax acts. As you can read there, the eligibility gains that are available for most importantly is if you have a sale of a stock, sell of a business or even sell of a real estate and you have capital gains, it can be reinvested uh, to potentially defer some of your capital gains for uh, till 2026. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities again, the economic growth in lower income communities. So every state uh, is has the opportunity to designate what an opportunity zone is in their state. Uh, you know, we do typically, we do have an offering available. I'd love to talk to folks about that as well. If you're in a situation where you're trying to, you know, avoid um, paying the capital gains. Very similar to a 1031 exchange, you have 180 days to acquire uh, uh, the opportunity zone investing opportunity. So again, uh, the main thing is here, you defer capital gains until uh, 2026. So yeah, that first payment would be owed in first quarter 2027. This is why investors invest in the opportunity zones. No federal taxes on any of the profits if you hold the investment for 10 years. Again, that could create an uh, illiquidity issue because your money you're investing, typically it's at least $100,000 you most likely have to be an accredited investor for the offerings that we work with. Uh, now you can do something on your own and do your own uh, opportunities and investing if you're trying to do your own investing in that area. Um, and also possibility of uh, passive losses, depreciation of equipment or depreciation uh, that's gonna happen uh, on that investment vehicle. So many opportunities involved with this. Uh, we do have a, a, a current offering. I'd love to chat with you about if you're in that situation where uh, and you have that 108, you're within that 180 day window. Again, most of these investments are a minimum of $100,000 for the investment. Uh, here's our disclosure slide. I know that's a little slow, uh, slow uh, a little low there, but again, this is not an offer uh, to sell or buy security. Um, and there's a lot of risks that it's involved with uh, opportunities on investing. 
or anything uh, opportunities we have. So please take a moment and review that slide, especially if you're watching on the replay. So let's look at the last opportunity we talked on that first slide, which was how do we avoid the capital gains tax altogether? So in this case, we have Mr. and Mrs. Real Estate. Uh, they have a duplex that valued at a million dollars. They bought it for 350,000. They fully depreciated it down to 300,000. Capital gains was 650,000. So in this case, um, we asked them, you know, would you like, they're obviously wanting to sell that. Here's the problems, their taxes, uh, the stress of management. So most folks that uh, are selling their real estate is because they, they no longer want to be in the landlord business. So if there is a way that you can sell the real estate and pay no capital gains tax, avoid all income taxes and estate taxes, transfer the full value of real estate to your heirs. And this is pretty cool. Totally disinherit the IRS on the sale of the real estate. You can receive a tax deduction from the IRS. The IRS actually likes this as an opportunity. And again, we just asked, would you be interested in this? Well, let's take a look at this. So again, here's that million dollars. I'm gonna just click through here. Estimated tax, again, these are estimates, these are not guaranteed, but in this scenario is um, that $750,000 is what would be left over. If you multiply that by 5%, that's gonna provide an income of about $39,000, almost $40,000 a year. That's the recapture tax. Um, and again, if death would occur, you're leaving your heirs with $795,000. Now let's look at the opportunity of avoiding taxes. So we look at getting a tax exempt trust for a million dollars. And we get, when you open up that tax exempt trust for that million dollars, you're actually getting a $300,000 tax deduction. And that tax deduction, again, when we're looking at this case is you are providing, there's zero taxes involved. You're able to provide yourself or your beneficiaries with a $50,000 a year income stream. There's zero recapture taxes upon death. And upon death, you leave money uh, to a nonprofit or foundation. This is a charitable remaining trust that we'd be working with. The other thing is we've saved that $300,000 tax deduction. So with that, there's a good chance that if you took $100,000 and invested into a life insurance policy, potentially a second to die policy, again, this is just for illustrational purposes. We'd have to look specifically based off your ages, but that creates a million dollars of a tax-free estate. So in this case, if you go back to it, it's really is, how do we give a million dollars to your heirs? How do we provide a million dollars of living, which is $50,000 a year for 20 years? And then we also leave money left over for a nonprofit. Uh, again, that becomes income tax-free. Again, this is the current plan of the sale. This is just gonna show you the the numbers of what we're looking at. So again, with this opportunity is we are able to uh, fund income for $50,000 a year versus $39,750. We're paying $0 in tax. We give a million dollars your heirs through a tax, uh, tax opportunity. We're providing you income while you're alive or to your heirs. And then also we provided and funded a, a million dollars to a, a foundation. Again, these are just for hypothetical purposes. We'd love the opportunity to be able to see if this works for you. And, and again, one of the CPAs that we work with says, you're better off if you give first than selling your asset later. So there's a lot of opportunities when it comes to uh, how you give the money. And typically if we're giving prior to the sale, um, then those are opportunities you're gonna need to look at with this. Again, here's the disclosure, that is a tax exempt uh, or referred to a 5227 trust called a charitable mating uni trust, annuity trust, or a net income with makeup trust. So those are all opportunities. Again, uh, real estate is illiquid. These are all just, again, review these slides. Uh, the minimum uh, distribution required, but always 5%, but it actually could be a little higher there. But again, our goal for that 5% is to try to leave money to the nonprofits. Again, for those that are just joining us, uh, you know, please uh, feel free to schedule a follow-up call. My phone number is 813-710-4123. You can also uh, send me text to that number. So let's look at the next opportunity we have here. 
So we have Mr. and Mrs. Giver. So we have someone who loves to give, um, and they are currently looking at doing an, a Roth IRA conversion. They're currently giving to various ministries to their church, temple, synagogue, mosque. Uh, they have investable assets over $500,000, which could be invested for the long term. So this is, again, kind of the scenario we're looking at is they want to give, yet they'd like to reduce their taxes now. Again, they're trying to do a Roth conversion today. Um, and they also have extra, maybe some exercise stock options and a sizable bonus. So these are all reasons uh, for this next example. However, again, the key to the solution is we want to reduce their high taxes right now this year. So if there's a way that they can accelerate the tax deduction for future giving to this current year, would you be interested? And again, this is something we want to look at. We've trademarked this at our firm, J.A. Ruffman Company. It's called the Commitment Giving Trust. So in this example, we put $100,000 into a stock portfolio. We are committing, in this scenario, we're committing to give money away for the next five years. So we're giving $25,000 to the charity of their choice. And it's given out on a quarterly basis. And after five years, this is an irrevocable trust for five years. Whatever that dollar amount is left over, that current value is returned to the grantor of that trust or to you as the investor. So uh, now these are based off of AFR rates, um, which would be uh, based off in July of 23. So these do change. So obviously get with us or get with your accountant. We would figure out uh, what it actually would mean for you if you're trying to do a uh, an opportunity here with this uh, couple couple weeks left in December. So in this case, we're able to give $100,000 away into a, we're giving away into an investment opportunity. We're only committing to give $25,000 right now. If you do that, that current year tax deduction is $22,000. So again, they're able to take all that up front. So there's no, even though you're giving away for the next five years, you're not getting any future deductions because you're taking all that in the first year because you're committing in that irrevocable trust to give those dollars away. So that current tax savings, if you're in a 37% tax bracket, would be about $8,300. Um, the future value of tax saves, so if we took that $8,300 and we invested it at 5%, again, not guaranteed, but you know, you'd have about $10,615 uh, during that time period. And then a future value. So the other thing is we're freeing up $5,000 a year. So if we take that $5,000 that you're typically giving from and you're giving out of your bucket of money, then we're able to save those dollars for you. So that's where these calculations come from. Again, this is strictly for illustrational purposes. Uh, and it does provide, a nice thing is to your church or charity, it lets them know on a quarterly basis they're going to be getting a check. And again, you can change uh, who that's actually coming to. And this is just another example that you can do this on multiple years. So in this example, we're doing a commitment giving trust for a 20 year period. So again, the nice thing is we're giving $100,000 to a, a church or charity, a 501C3. And in this case, again, kind of the same numbers I'm gonna show you there is the charitable deductions that they're getting. Right now, that's a first year deduction of about 67,000, almost 68,000. Again, that's gonna fluctuate a little bit because that was based off the AR. AFR rates uh, of 4.2 in July. But ultimately, you're giving that money away. You're freeing up cash flow cash flow on a, on a yearly basis. And again, we're not saying you have to stop giving. But nice thing is you're giving off of your own assets. And here's the nice thing is, you know, we're not guaranteeing you're going to get your money back. But in, in the example here, if you're giving away 5% a year, uh, the fees for this is about 2% on average per year. So if we can earn uh, a hypothetical 7% per year, there's a good chance that you could get your $100,000 back. Again, that's absolutely not guaranteed. That's based off of market returns. Uh, but again, that tax savings you're getting this year on that is that's about $25,000 you're saving in taxes by doing this commitment over that time period. I just want to uh, leave this disclosure slide up there. Um, kind of take a look at, again, this is a commitment giving trust. Uh, or another term is a grantor's, the actual legal term is a grantor's leads annuity trust, uh, which the dividends, interest, capital gains, this trust will be reported to the grantor annually as taxable income. Charitable deductions are limited to 30% of your adjusted gross income. Uh, you know, again, these are some opportunities there. So uh, 
With that said, I do want to, uh, again, let no, folks know on this call, uh, we do have opportunities that are still available for year-end tax planning. Uh, we do have some active opportunities. Uh, there are, uh, obviously, only two, with two weeks left in the year, we do have to act quick. I do offer free consultations for those that are on this call. So I'd love the opportunity to, to gather together. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the recording, and it looks like